Hi everyone, this is Nathan from Snap and today we're going to be looking at how to create multilingual surveys and forms and going through a few considerations to be aware of when running your projects in different languages. It should take about 20 minutes and as ever there is plenty of further resources available which I'll be pointing to you at the end. We're going to be using Snap XMP, our new seamlessly integrated platform which has got three main components to it. Snap Desktop, which is installed on your PC or laptop. Snap Online, our cloud-based application, and for those of you who might be doing any field-based interviewing, so face-to-face -face interviewing, we also have the Snap Offline Interviewer app. Today, we're going to be using Snap Desktop and also Snap Online. First of all, we'll take a look at the language templates supplied with Snap XMP, including how to add additional languages. We'll then look at making use of the translation tool, which allows for easy external translations to take place. And finally, we'll discuss redirecting your respondents to a relevant thank you page, or perhaps follow on page, having completed the form. And along the way, I'll also be pointing out a few things to consider as you go about your multilingual projects. OK, so let's begin. We'll start off looking at some of the templates that are provided in Snap XMP. So within Snap Desktop, I'm going to create a new survey, and I'm going to create that in the Webinars folder. Our starting point for a survey is a template. Remember that alongside the templates that we provide, you can also create your own, which can be accessed by dropping down the menu. But moving back to the templates that we supply, you can see today I have three templates available to me, which includes a blank with Welsh edition. Depending upon whereabouts in the world you are, you may well have a different selection of supplied templates. So for example, in the US, we supply a French and also a Spanish one. So I'll go ahead and create a survey using the Welsh template today. And as I said, I'll create that in the webinars folder. And I'll just give it a name of languages demo. As with all our templates, this has automatically created a version suitable for a PC or laptop, as well as a tablet, a phone, and there's also a paper edition. Being a Welsh template, it's also created both an English and a Welsh language edition. Built into this template are a number of pre-translated elements, including the initial language selection question. If I click on the Welsh edition and go up to Questionnaire Properties and then come down to Buttons, you can see that the CSS buttons have automatically reverted to the Welsh text. And further down in the text section, these are all the potential messages which might display when a questionnaire is being completed. These have also been translated for you. Now, my Welsh isn't the best, but I do believe that this message I've just got highlighted is something along the lines of, please answer this question. We'll come back to the text messages later, but for the time being, I'm going to head back to the main design window and go back into the English edition. There's a number of options of how you go about designing your multilingual surveys. If I add a new question and a title in English, so my title is going to be about you, and I'll add a single choice question of how many children are there in your family. And I'll just add a couple of answers. I can then move into the Welsh edition and overtype it with my best attempt at Welsh. Now, I don't speak Welsh, but I do believe the Welsh for you might be CHI. And just to confirm, that text has changed in the Welsh edition. It hasn't edited the text in the English edition. So I could obviously hand snap over to a colleague who speaks Welsh and they could overtype it for me, but the likelihood is whilst they might speak Welsh, they most likely don't speak snap and they end up pressing enter or tab and adding new questions and answers. So ideally, that's not what you want to be doing. Instead, we're going to be making use of the translation tool. The basic principle here is that you export a text file, someone translates that text file and then you re-import it. So I'll just go through the wizard and I will prepare an external translation. I'll just point that off to my desktop.
and I'm just going to pop an E at the end just to make it obvious that this is the English text file. And then start to create the file. As you can see, it gives a quick report including the number of words and variables that have been exported. The line two variables produce no content, that's in relation to the two logos in my survey. So today I've got a paper logo and then I've got a different online logo. If we go and have a quick look at that document on my desktop and open up the text file, you can see it starts off with some instructions on what to do with this document. So basically translate everything between the words start and end. Now, as I said, Welsh isn't my speciality, so instead of attempting to translate this now, I'm actually going to make use of a file which I've already had translated. And it's simply a case of going back into Snap, back to translation, and this time applying that external translation. It's still pointing off to my English translation. I'll now point it off to my Welsh translation. And just be sure to confirm which actual translation file is going to be pointing off to which language edition. Earlier I attempted to translate the title, so about you, but I've now got a full translation so I will override any existing content. And then start to import the file. There are a couple of messages to check. Here it's telling me that the text for certain questions and answers is exactly the same in both the English file and the Welsh file. So things like the numbers and the very first question which is the language selection question. Plus at the end I've got the N1 and N2. Again that just refers back to my two logos in my survey. And that's it. My translated text now appears in the Welsh editions. And I haven't had to mess around with Word, copying and pasting text across a question at a time. A couple of key benefits to using the translation tool include the fact that some languages have different characters and different alphabets, which can sometimes get lost if you're copying them across from Word or Excel. Whereas importing a text file, they will come across just fine. And because you're not copying and pasting, there's no danger of accidentally pasting a set of answers into the wrong question, on top of that, you don't have to contend with Word doing its best to make a mess of your survey when you export to it or end up trying to make any amendments. Now of course you might have a requirement to create a survey in a different language. In which case, simply click on the additions icon and add a new language. Today I'm going to choose Spanish, which is on my main list, but if it's not on the main list then just simply click on more and then we've got all the different languages there. But today I'm going to stick with Spanish. And then it's just a case of using the translation tool again to import that translated text file. Just before we move on though, I did just want to point you in the direction of the reference window which contains a survey pack. The basic reference survey pack is the one which SNAP supplies. The idea is that you create your own one and we do supply you with the user survey pack for you to edit and make your own. But moving back to the basic reference survey pack, these questions have already been translated for you. So if I move into the Welsh edition, you can see I have my Welsh text. And if I was to choose a character based language such as perhaps Arabic or Urdu, you can see that the formatting has been reversed right to left. And if I pop it back to the English text and I will take that question and I'll simply drag it onto my survey. I can pop it anywhere I like, but today I'll pop it at the bottom. And if I go across back to my English edition, obviously the English text has appeared. But if I go into my Welsh edition, there's the Welsh and also the Spanish. So if you can build some translated questions into your own survey pack, moving forward you won't need to get so much of your work translated. On the subject of translations, earlier we looked at the text section of questionnaire properties. These being the various messages that could pop up whilst the survey is being completed. You do have the option to edit these messages, you just need to bear in mind that you'd also need to edit the equivalent language text message as well. And the easiest way to do this would just be to grab the text file, send it off to a colleague or client to translate, and then from within the language edition, 
point it off to that edited translated text file. If you're just editing one or two messages though, it's probably just as easy to manually edit it within the text section. The final thing I wanted to talk about today was the idea that when someone completes a survey or form, you have the option to redirect them somewhere. The default is a thank you page hosted by Snap, but you just need to bear in mind that that thank you page is in English. Often you might wish to direct them off to your own thank you page, or perhaps a specific page on your website which is a bit more relevant to what they've just been responding about. If you are going to be sending them off to your own website, it might be that your website's already dual language, but you don't really want to be sending them off to a page on your website and then asking them to choose what their preferred language is again. So instead today, we would dynamically redirect them based upon the language they use to complete the survey. And it will be based around the response to the first question in my survey, which is the language select question. And you can see if I click on it and look down the bottom, that question is actually called id.language. And if you remember that this was the question that was automatically included when we created the survey using the Welsh language template. So if they choose option number one, which is English, they will be taken off to an English thank you page. And if they choose option two, we'll send them off to a Welsh page. I'm going to go up to additions again and actually hide my Spanish additions. So we won't worry about option number three. And if I take you off to the pages where I'm going to potentially send them. So if they choose option one, they'll be sent off to my English thank you page. And if I choose option two, they'll be taken off to the Welsh thank you page. So moving back to Snap, to reference the id.language question, we will go into the variables window and I'm going to create a new derived variable. I'll give it a name of web page and we're potentially going to go off to one of two different places, so it's a single response. And the website for my English survey, I'll paste that in. And then if I go and grab the Welsh text, if I tab down, that's the Welsh URL. The value or condition will be that very first question, so id.language, and then equals one for the English id.language equals 2 for the Welsh. Now today I'm keeping things nice and simple and just having two possible redirect pages, but by adding additional conditions you could have any number of potential pages to be redirected to based upon how the individuals reply. So for example I could add q1 equals 1, so that would send them off to the Welsh thank you page if they filled it out in Welsh and they said yes to question number 1 but I'm going to delete that one today. Now one thing which is easy to forget is that earlier we translated the visible questions but we also need to translate this derived variable. So I just need to switch to the Welsh language edition and then just put the URLs back in. Okay, so now that I've got my derived variable set up, we can then reference this derived variable in the questionnaire properties of the design window. So today I will send them off to the end result of my derived variable. Um, just note that you do need to put that in the extra curly brackets. Let's do a quick preview and then we'll see how this is all pulled together. Now, I could obviously do a preview within Snap Desktop using the publish option, but today I wanted to show you something in just a moment in Snap Online. So actually, we're gonna pop into Snap Online now and preview it from there. I just saved what I've done and synchronize the survey with Snap Online, and then we can log into my Snap Online account. So if I go ahead and log in, 
and we were working in the webinars folder and you can see I have my survey there so I'll just go ahead and publish the survey and if I go and launch the preview I get my warning just to tell me that this is indeed just a preview and the data won't be stored so if I fill out my survey in English obviously get my English buttons and also my English thank you message I close that one down and then fill out the preview in Welsh my question text is obviously Welsh as are my navigational buttons and also we're redirected off to the correct Welsh thank you page okay so I've created a new survey using the template provided by snap which already had the Welsh language edition built into it we potentially added an additional language edition we use the translation tool to export a text file ready to be translated and then re-imported and then finally we've just set a dynamic redirect page to ensure that your respondents get a seamless online experience now just to finish off i did just want to point out that the template that we use within snap desktop is also available within snap online allowing you to create multilingual surveys and projects no matter where you are So that covers everything I was planning on showing you today. Hopefully it's shown you how quick and easy it is to build and translate your multilingual projects in Snap XMP. As mentioned previously, there is plenty of additional resources out there, including a couple of pages highlighted here, which can be found on our support hub. And of course, remember that we are always on the end of the phone or email, whether that's accessing our help desk or perhaps booking onto one of our training courses, or if you are short of resources or just like a helping hand, our research department can assist you with any aspect of your project, from simple data entry jobs right through to complete project management. Okay, thank you very much for joining us and we'll hopefully see you again soon.